Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to create an R notebook, how to um, preview that notebook inside R Studio so you can see what the final um, version of your work will look like. And I will also show you how to um, open up your the final version of your work in a web browser um, so that it can be shared with anyone even people who don't have R and R Studio on their computer. So first we'll start with uh, just opening up R Studio. So you can see I have R Studio already open on my computer. And I just want to talk a little bit about the three windows that you see right now. This window on the left is called the console. And when you first open up R Studio, it will tell you some information about the version of R that you have. In the top right, we have uh, a window that right now is on the Environment tab. And as you start programming in R, this tab will tell you information about your variables and your data sets. And in particular, it will tell you which variables you have and what's inside them. This bottom window has a number of interesting tabs. Um, one is the Files tab. And the Files tab lets you see documents on your computer, as well as documents you create within our studio. The Plots tab, this is where the um, plots or the graphs that you create will appear. The Packages tab, this is just a list of all the packages that you have on your computer. So these are R packages. The way I like to explain R packages to people who are new to R is to imagine that there is a, that R has a library. Um, so, you know, R is a great program. It can do lots of things, but it doesn't know everything. And what's great about R is when it wants to learn something new or it needs to learn something new, it can go to the library and check out a book. And in this metaphor, the packages are the books. Um, so, for example, there's a package right here called Aphex. And this is a really great package for conducting analysis of variance. And so we can load that package, and now R knows how to do analysis of variance with the Aphex package. Um, so you can see I've got lots and lots of packages. Not very many of them are actually loaded, though. And that's because R only wants to check out the books that it's going to read today. So it doesn't just uh, memorize these books forever. It only, um, the idea is as a programmer, you only load the books or only load the packages that you're going to use that uh, session. OK, so that's a really useful tool. Um, this tab is the Help tab. Here's where you can find out more information about how to work with R. One thing I recommend checking out is the R Studio Cheat Sheets. There are all kinds of really helpful cheat sheets. Um, so you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I'm really excited to learn R, but there's just so much. And I learn one thing, I learn a second thing, I forget the first thing. Uh, and so what I always tell my students and myself is there's no pressure to memorize every single little detail of R. Instead, what you need to learn is how to find out the information you need. And one way to do that is with these cheat sheets. And the other way is with Google. Uh, and, and once you become comfortable with the idea of, I know how to find out what I need to know, either through these cheat sheets or through just a Google search, um, that's really the moment when you become comfortable with R and when you can sort of consider yourself, in my opinion, an R programmer. And the final tab in this bottom right window is the Viewer tab. And this is the window where we will be previewing our, our R notebooks. And in fact, it's the um, what I'm going to recommend you do is to maximize this window. And we'll be working with our code on the left, 
and our final product, a preview of our final product on the right. And I, this is usually the way I'm working with our studio when I'm at home, is I've got these two screens side by side, and I can see, um, uh, I can be working on my code and seeing it updating, uh, or see the, the final product um, right beside it, which is really, really helpful. Okay, so next, uh, now that we know the parts of our studio, let's make a notebook. It's so going to go file, new file, our notebook. And now on the left, there's now two windows. So there's the notebook window and the console window got shrunk down. So I've just increased it in size again. So on the left now, we have the R notebook on the top and the console on the bottom and the preview screen or the viewer screen on the right. But for the most part, we will keep the console minimized um, and we'll be working with our notebook and our viewer. Notebooks are really great because they can be used to generate Word documents or HTML files from your code so you can create your code and then just send it to everyone, anyone, even people who don't have R. So let's start by previewing what's already here. So before we even explain what's going on in the code on the left here, let's just hit preview and see what the final outcome is. And that will help us understand the connection between what's happening on the left and what the final product is. So I'm going to hit preview because I've never saved this file. It's going to ask me to save it right now. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to call it my first R notebook. Now when I hit preview again, we see the preview of my code here. So let's examine how what's going on on the left side is producing what's going on the right side. All right, so the first thing in every R notebook is this metadata. And so the metadata is just data about the document. In this case, we have a title for the document and we have an output style. So we can change the title um, to whatever we would like. So we can change it to my first R notebook. And it's also possible to change the output to Word or PDF. Um, but I'm going to recommend that when you're working with a notebook, it really makes sense to stick with the HTML output. Um, that's really the, uh, um, uh, I want to say, the, the best way of, of sharing a document, right? Because everyone has a web browser. OK. Next, we have this little bit of code here. And you can see that it pretty much just copies over, right? So this says, this is an R markdown, then a web address notebook. When you execute code within the notebook, the results appear beneath the code. So what we're seeing here is that just regular text just gets copied over to the final product. So unlike other scripting languages where you might need to comment out all of your um, anything you want to write about what you're programming, any comments you have here, you can just write them. Um, and in addition, you can use what's called Markdown to add uh, formatting to your text. So for example, notice here, the word run is yellow on my screen. And there's an asterisk in front of it and behind it. And when I look on the screen, the asterisks are gone and there's no, no yellow color, right? What's happening is that's how you make italics in with Markdown. If I want to make that bold, I can just add two asterisks. It turns green, and when I press Preview, Run is now bold. And you see it also updated the title, because I changed the title as well. Um, so there are a number of really cool things you can do with formatting with Markdown, and this will be a case where you might be thinking to yourself, oh, how am I going to memorize all of these little tricks having to do with Markdown? And again, you don't have to. Um, you can simply search for an R Markdown 
cheat sheet. And this cheat sheet has all the information you need about how to work with R Markdown. In particular, the second page explains how to do all these little formatting details. So for example, plain text is just plain text, but italics is you add an asterisk in the front <laughs> and the back, and bold, you add two asterisks, two in the front, two in the back. Um, if you want to have headers, you can just add number signs or hashtags. If you want to do a link, here's the code for a link. If you want to do a list, you can see unordered lists, you can see ordered lists, you can make tables. Um, so there's all kinds of options you can do, all types of formatting you can do with our markdown. Um, and it's um, and it's just plain text on the left, and it just gets converted to whatever you want or whatever you tell it to do on the right. Let's play a little bit with Markdown. I'm going to delete this code that uh, RStudio automatically filled in. And let's try plain text. And I'm going to add two spaces after that text. Um, because two spaces is what it takes to get a new line in our Markdown. Then I'm going to do italics. Then I'm going to do bold, we'll do the first header, a second header, a level three header. What I really like about these headers is that just like an APA style where you have level one, level two, level three, level four, level five headers, well, we have the exact same thing happening here. And that's going to be a preview for later in this course where we talk about how you can actually create APA style documents, including proper headings, using uh, our markdown. OK, so here's you know, some examples of our markdown formatting on the left. Let's press preview and see what they look like on the right. Oh, and so what we see is. If you remember, I put two spaces after plain text, but I didn't put two spaces after any of the other lines. So let's do that now and see how that changes things. There we go. Oh, and one other thing we got to do is, sorry, I added spaces to my headers here. That is not necessary. Let's add, let's get rid of those spaces. There we go, finally. Uh, so a couple of things uh, we can notice there. One, if you want to get, if you want to start a new line, you need two spaces. And two, the headers, um, the headers won't be picked up as heading 1, heading 2, heading 3, heading 4, heading 5, unless there's a space uh, or a line break um, above or below them there. Um, so that's going to be an important thing to keep in mind when you're formatting your own documents. OK, so this is um, our markdown. You know, it's just plain text you know, uh, formatted. We haven't done any coding in R yet, so let's do that. And so in a notebook, in an R notebook, how you do coding with R is you go to this insert button and you insert R code. And you can see you could insert other types of code, but we're going to be doing just R. And when you do that, you get a chunk. A chunk is three ticks, then the R, and then it ends in three ticks. And in the middle, you write R code. On the right here, we've got um, three buttons. The one that we'll use the most is just the play button. What we'll do is we'll type in some code, we'll press play, see what happens. Uh, we'll type in some more code, press play, see what happens. So let's write our first code here. Um, like other programming languages, R works with variables. So let's make a variable. My first variable 
And if you've never programmed before, what's kind of cool about programming is you can name the variables whatever you want. Um, then we have this weird symbol, the less than dash. That's the assignment operator. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. OK. So we made a variable, and we just we named it whatever we wanted. Then we wrote the assignment operator, and then we wrote in quotations, hello world. So what this line is saying is, it's saying, assign hello world to my first variable. Or another way to say it is, my, my first variable gets hello world. So if we press play, nothing happens. And that's exactly what should happen here. But we have behind the scenes created a variable called my first and my first variable and if we click on environments we can see it there so the variable is called my first variable its value is hello world another way we can confirm that this assignment worked is we can just write the name of the variable so when you write the name of the variable r takes that as a command to print it out to the screen so if we press play now Below, we get hello world, because our studio interpreted this command as print out the value of my first variable. And if you press preview, we can see our code, and we can see the output of our code. And so what's really, really cool about that is We can make our document look as good as we like. We can include all the code we want, and then we can share it with people who either don't have R, or maybe they're on their phone. Or maybe they're on a computer that doesn't have R. And they can still look at our code, examine our code, and they can still um, see what we did. One more thing I'm going to show you before this video ends, and that is Every time you press preview, our studio saves your notebook, but it also creates an HTML file like this. And so I'm going to go to my desktop and I can see there's my notebook. The notebook is called my first R notebook and it ends in .rmd, that stands for R Markdown document. And then there's this HTML file called my first R notebook dot mb dot html. So that just stands for notebook, as in an RStudio notebook, dot html. And if I double click that, it'll open up in my web browser. And there you go. This is what I could share with the world. Um, so I think that's really cool. And I think when it comes to reproducible science, the idea that you want other people to reproduce the analyses that you've done on your data uh, without any problems, this is going to be a really powerful tool to help you do that.